Okay, welcome back. In this video, we will look at the different rendering options in RASMapper, talking about the pros and cons to each mode and how they should be applied depending on your needs. We'll be using a Rain on Mesh 2D model to explore the different rendering options, and we're using the HECRAS version 6.4.1. We're going to be looking at the maximum more surface elevations dynamic map uh, to see the impact of the different rendering options. Now to access the rendering options, you're going to go to the tools menu up top, select options. So we'll bring up the RAS mapper options dialog box here. And if you go to the render mode, uh, you'll have you'll see here all of the available uh, water surface rendering modes uh, within RAS mapper. And you'll see that the default uh, rendering mode is the sloping cells, cell corners uh, mode. And what this mode does is this interpolates water surface elevations from each 2D cell corner. So if you look at your 2D mesh and your cells where you've got corners, a RAS mapper is using the water surface elevations from those cell corners to create the interpolated water surface uh, uh, grid that we see here before us. Uh, and this is going to give the mapping more continuity for a smoother, more realistic uh, delineation in most cases. Um, you can see we don't have a lot of isolated uh, floodplain areas. There's usually uh, a lot of connectivity uh, between the areas within this mode. Um, so that's a good thing, a positive thing for the default mode. However, you may notice some unexpectedly steep water surface slopes at the end of inundation areas, especially adjacent to um, some steeper terrain areas. And you can see it here, here, a little bit here, some along here. This effect becomes more pronounced when we turn on the, the water surface elevation contours. You can see that um, while most of the water surface is kind of gradually sloping down in the direction of flow here, Along some of the uh, edges uh, of the inundation area, you get a water surface that's kind of sloping up or bubbling up the, the terrain here. And this effect is known as cupping, and it's caused uh, by interpolating a, a shallow flow on one side of your cell with a deeper flow on the other side of your flow. So wherever your cells um, kind of have one of their faces on top of a bluff or a steeper terrain surface and the other side of the cell, the other face is in a flatter, deeper flowing area, you're going to see this cupping effect. And this is, is something that we try to avoid and we don't really want to see because it's not uh, a very realistic uh, result. Um, now, a different method we can explore is the horizontal rendering mode. And when we apply that, what we'll see is that's actually kind of largely resolved some of those cupping issues that we were seeing, and we don't really have that um, that sloping uh, steep water surface elevation extending up uh, at the inundation boundary. Um, if we turn on the map values, what we're going to see, these are the computed water surface elevations for each of the cells. And what RAS Mapper is doing is it's creating a flat horizontal water surface everywhere within each cell. So you can see how the um, everywhere uh, the rendering is identical to the calculated water surface elevations within that cell. Now what you get uh, with the horizontal method is you get a kind of a gridded feel to your delineation. You get kind of sharp changes in water surface elevations across uh, cell faces. Um, you also have some problems in your shallow flow areas where you get more of these isolated or disconnected um, inundation areas. You get some uh, straight line uh, delineations at cell faces, particularly in the, the shallow uh, flow areas. So the horizontal method uh, or horizontal mode produces some undesirable, undesirable results as well, particularly for the uh, shallow flow areas and especially when you're using a Raynon mesh model. Now, uh, a third rendering mode option is the sloping cell corner and cell faces mode. And when we apply this, um, what we get is something that's probably a little bit more similar to the sloping cell corners method. But what this method or mode is doing is it's using the cell corners as well as the, uh, uh, the face centers 
for uh, elevations for the interpolation. So it's got more um, it's got more elevations it can use to create the interpolated water surface. Um, this can have an unexpected uh, variation uh, within your um, within your water surface here um, because it's using more points to create the interpolation. So it can create some unexpected variations within cells, um, but it it does a fairly good job at um, producing a smooth, mostly continuous water surface. Um, and when you compare that to the sloping cell corners, you can see the differences visually between these two modes. You still have the cupping effect in most areas that we had them before with the sloping uh, cell corners. But with this method, you also have a couple of sub options. You have the use depth weighted faces or preset mode, which if we turn that on and apply that, uh, we'll see that that largely resolves our, our cupping issues for the most part. What this mode is doing is it's taking um, not only the, the various elevations for the interpolation, but it's weighting those elevations based on the depth of flow on each face. So where we have a deeper flow, it's going to give more weight to the interpolation. We've got shallower flow, it's going to give less weight to the interpolation. So this is a method that's specifically um, developed to kind of eliminate these cupping issues, particularly for a rain on mesh simulation, which is why it's called the precipitation mode. So this is generally producing the best rendered result for a rain on mesh model. You also have another option um, to, um, uh, to allow the shallow water to reduce to horizontal. So if we apply that, we can see what that'll do is that will take some of our shallow flow areas and where the, uh, where RASMAPPER uh, identifies shallow flow, it will map it based on a horizontal water surface. So this will actually kind of return some of the uh, uh, shallower water to the rendered results rather than omitting it. So you get a little bit more of these areas uh, showing up. So sometimes that can be desirable, sometimes that's not desirable. You can see if we turn that off, how those compare. So those are the different render mode options RAS Mapper has. You can see how drastic, uh, drastically different the results can appear. And this is all based on the same uh, 2D model simulation. So it's the same uh, 2D flow computations, two, same 2D results just rendered differently. And you can see how that produces uh, very different results um, for your mapping. So. Um, just a few things to keep in mind um, with any of these sloped rendering modes it may create an additional water volume since it's interpolating a water surface across each cell so you're going to want to be use uh, the sloped methods with uh, caution especially if you plan to export your sloped results to a stored map for external volume calculations if you need to perform some external volume calculations um, it's probably best to actually just use the horizontal method because this is going to be um, probably the, the truest representation of the calculated volumes on your mesh. So if your volume is an important consideration and you're going to be exporting to stored maps, um, you're going to want to use the horizontal um, rendering mode. If you're using the sloped mode, um, you may have some, some volume differences just based on the interpolation method. And when you're performing a rain on mesh modeling, it really does seem that the uh, sloping cell corners and face centers using the preset mode uh, generally appears to do the best for cleaning up the mapping and producing the best blend of results compared to the default sloping and the horizontal modes. If you're not performing uh, a rain on mesh modeling and you're just using um, defined flow into a 2D area, then probably the default sloping method would probably be adequate or work best. Um, possibly even the horizontal method could, could work well depending on your cell resolution. Um, which leads me to my last point, which is that sometimes the only way to get mapping results that, that are acceptable or desirable for your um, modeling needs is to reduce the size of the cells in your mesh. Many of the rendering issues like discontinuities um, and kind of abrupt um, transitions, uh, these things um, can result because RAS is trying to interpolate 
some shallow flows where there's steep terrain. Um, so it's going to be difficult for the program to render proper mapping without a smaller cell size. So if you're not getting the rendered results that you're happy with, then the probably best option is to start reducing your cell size to um, allow RAS to have a, a smoother interpolation uh, to get rid of some of those discontinuities or things that you don't uh, like about the mapping. So that's all for now. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know which render mode you like best. And don't forget to su subscribe if you want to see more content like this.